everybody, Aaron Jan here for Forever Football DRFC, your Dog Strovers fan channel. It is preview day because, of course, it's a massive fixture coming up now away at Gillingham. Now, before we get started talking about the game, please like the video if you've loved it. Comment down below your thoughts and opinions. Subscribe if you are new around here. Click the notification bell so you know this YouTube video. And let's get straight into this one. So... Gillingham, uh, the first of the, I guess, season-defining five games um, against teams between 16th and 22nd. Obviously, Gillingham are going to be a very tough task. They like to uh, scrap results. They like to uh, never give up and try and get something out of the game, if not a win, a draw. Um, you know, we out of watching the highlights back after the Sunderland match, they looked like they had a bright start and then Sunderland just piled on the pressure and maybe they could have taken advantage of getting at least a point if Sunderland, after Sunderland went down to 10 men, but they just didn't do it in the end. But I think there's stuff there that's definitely going to worry our back line and I think that it's going to be really hard to, uh, to suggest that we're going to do anything in this game. It's going to be an interesting one to see. It's going to be an interesting one to uh, to watch and see how we perform. Um, and I'm quite interested to see what it's going to be. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It should be quite interesting. But uh, anyway, let's just have a look then at Gillingham, for those of you who need some statistics, statistics on, uh, on Gillingham, uh, for those of you who just need a bit of a reminder of what they've been doing uh, so far this season. Of course, uh, they are placed in 20th. So they're only four points ahead of us, so they're not doing as well, well. They're doing better than we are, but they're not doing as bad as uh, well. They're doing better than us. Let's just put it that way. Um, and sort of looking at their statistics uh, from the matches, uh, they scored 12 goals. They conceded 19. Uh, they assisted six, which is an interesting one as well. Uh, a goals per game ratio of 0 0.9. Uh, our goals per game ratio stands currently at 0 0.5, which is less, so, which is considerably less, as you would have expected. So, um, you know, Juddingham isn't that much higher in goals per game and the, well, the expected goals per game, but I think that they're definitely going to be expected to score at least one in this game. Um, their goal conversion is 12%, they've scored 2 out of 3 penalties, 1 out of 6 free kicks, um, <clears throat> 7 out of the 86 potential goals inside the box, 3 out of 61 potential goals outside the box completed. Um, in terms of their defending, they've had 1 clean sheet all season, so maybe this could be 2 clean sheets, knowing our performances at the minute, it could be 2 clean sheets. Um, <clears throat> The goals conceded per game ratio is 1.5, which again is very, uh, very interesting indeed. 57.5% um, joules, uh, 57.5, which is 53.4% joules won per game, and three red cards. So, I mean, overall, they're definitely going to be an interesting team to watch. Uh, now, obviously, we do have my predicted 11 uh, for this game. Uh, we know that John Taylor uh, is probably going to make his first start on Saturday against Cheltenham. So he won't be starting in this game. I think he'll be on the bench. Ben Close, again, we'll see if he's back or not. But I'm, I'm sort of going a bit different here. I think uh, Wellens will change it around a bit after the defeat. I reckon we'll go with something different. So... Uh, this is a combination of what I think he might do and uh, what what I want to, to, him to do. So and and there's no question, Wellings will still be the manager. You know, I, I've seen this whole thing about football whispers reporting that you know Wellings will be replaced in November by uh, former Huddersfield manager Lee Clark, and you know. I don't believe it for a second. I, I wouldn't believe it for a second. Not unless the club officially come out and say Wellens has gone, in comes Lee Clark. I wouldn't believe it for a second. And, you know, sources like the Free Press and the Oxford Post, if they put something out saying that Wellens has now gone, rumours about Lee Clark getting the job in the next 24 hours, then I might start to believe it. But off one site, no, I don't believe it. Um, but Wellens is still the manager. That's as far as we go. So, 4-3-3. I'm not going to go with the 4-2-3-1. I think 4-3-3. Three, three. Um, <clears throat> got Dahlberg in goal. We've got back four of Rowe, Anderson, Alowu, and Noyal. I think Alowu should start. Roshaw Williams has, made, has been making too many errors of late. And I think that, even since the season started, I think he's been making too many errors. So, I think that 
Yeah, on Saturday, I think it was just one error too many. I think Alou should be starting, in my opinion. Uh, midfield three of Smith, Bostock, Galbraith. Uh, Hiwula and Vilker on the wings with Dudu up front. Chakur on the bench, Taylor on the bench. Close, I think, will be at least on the bench. Um, I've got a feeling Close will start, but I was sort of debating between him and Smith, and I'm like, I don't know. I, I think Close will probably start, but I would like to see Smith and Bostock and Galbraith operate as a midfield three. Um, but I think Close will probably start. Um, Taylor, Taylor on the bench, like I said, Shakira on the bench. I think Williams could be on the bench if Alou starts, if not the other way around. Um, Charlie Seaman, I don't think he'll be back, so I don't think he'll be on the bench, in my opinion. Um, Brandon Horton will be on the bench. Lewis Jones will be back up goalkeeper. So it has, we, it's what we expected with the bench, really. You know, a couple of academy players will be in there. Hassani might be on the bench, who knows. Uh, but it's going to be interesting. But that's the best team. That's one of the best teams we could put out right now. Because apart from Okunabiri, the rest of the players that are out, Cameron John, Charlie Seaman, Dan Gardner, you know, and Aidan Barlow as well, they've played certain parts this season. The only player that's not played any minutes so far this season is Okunabiri, and he's not back until November. So this is the best squad we can put out right now. And unfortunately, it's not really doing any good. Um, but fingers crossed, we could turn it around tomorrow. Now, my predicted scoreline. <sighs> this is a weird one. I'm... I, I can't find any bright spots from Saturday that's going to give me any kind of confidence going into Shillingham. I think there's a chance we could take a point out of it. But again, do I have belief we're going to take a point out of it? I don't know. You know, I always support the team for a minute one to minute 90, but it's, it's so hard. It really is so hard. So... I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with a one-one draw. Let's be fair here. I'm gonna go with a one-one draw. Let's just see what happens with that. So, one-one uh, draw for me. Comment down below your predictions. But that's gonna be it for this preview. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And for now, I'm Aaron Chalner from Fro Football DRFC, Keatley on the Rovers Live, and that, my friends, full time Rovers side die. Thank you very much, and I'll see you all for the review tomorrow evening. Rovers,